Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. We're doing for you another cast iron bread loaf. This is one that we haven't done before. It's an even more simple recipe and process. It's the perfect size for this standard lodge cast iron loaf pan and the uniqueness of it, the crispness of it. This is a recipe that I would love for you to learn from and master and make this a part of your family's meals. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk real quick about ingredients because it's not complicated. There are some vagaries, but we'll talk more about that. You've got two and a half cups of bread flour, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of yeast, one and a quarter cups of milk, and two tablespoons of butter. You can put some variety in there. We do use some honey in ours because we get a fair amount of honey over the summer, and we've got to find a way to use it from all of our beehives. For this video, we're also going to be using our dry can flour. We canned this about a year ago and we like to do a rotation through our stock. Dry canning flour, easy, gets a nice preserve on it. It's always there if you need it, but we do like to rotate through it. So probably in the near future, as we've used up our canned flour, dry canned flour, we'll go ahead and do another video and show you the dry canning process. It is too easy to do. As you assemble your ingredients, one of the very first things that you want to do is heat up your milk and a little bit of sugar or honey mixed in with it because you're going to activate that yeast. You want that milk to be somewhere between 110 and 120 degrees when you pour that yeast in. There's just something about filling the house up with the smell of freshly cooking bread. This will actually bring the kids out of their bedroom, come running down the stairs and ask, you cooking fresh bread, Dad? Give it about a 10 minutes. You're also proofing, seeing that it gets started, and you won't run into the problem of maybe you have some bad yeast that won't activate. When you see a foam on top, you know that yeast is good to go. I find it easier to keep my dry ingredients separate, mix them on their own, and then add my wet ingredients, which is the butter, honey, milk, add those as a separate. You don't necessarily have to use this mixer. You can put in the elbow grease and do the folding and stretching those glutens, kneading it over a, I don't know, maybe a 10 minute process. I'll tell you what, a lot of people get uh, concerned about buying one of these mixers. They're multi-purpose, multi-tool. I love having ours. And we even found it on Craigslist for about half the price of what you would have actually paid for it brand new. And it'll last us forever. It's we're not using it even once a week. We're, we're using it a couple of times a month. It's going to last us forever. It goes without saying that you can do all of this without the mixer. Just replace it with manually. It is worthwhile noting that if you're using a dough hook or doing the kneading yourself, you'll need to add flour until it becomes not sticky or with the mixer pulls away from the edges and turns into that creamy soft looking overall dough lump. Of course you can use regular sugar for this video but we we have our own honey bees we we harvest our own honey so we like to replace sugar with honey and it's a little bit more than one to one. If it's a tablespoon of sugar we put maybe one and a quarter tablespoons of honey in it. I believe you can taste it in the bread and I like the more naturalness of it as opposed to processed sugar. Yeast does require moisture and warmth in order to do its job. We heat the bowl up before we put the rising dough in. We also use the microwave as a warming oven. With that container of boiled water sitting in there with your rising bread, you're keeping that moisture and that heat in there. Makes for the perfect environment for your rising to occur. Keeps it a little bit warm, moist. It all stays within that microwave. It's the right spot to do it. That's one of our solid tips or tricks on rising your bread. With that preheated bowl, you're going to want to grease the bowl before you put your dough ball into it to rise. You leave that in that warm area for an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes until you see that it is puffed up and risen up out of the bowl. With the whole concept of this channel, the Teach Amanda Fish channel, 
Learning how to make bread is a worthwhile task to undertake. It can be a little bit intimidating the first time you do it and be patient with yourself. You will make mistakes. Every now and then you'll make this solid brick of cooked flour, but it, as you develop your skills, teach a man to fish, the whole concept of this channel, homemade bread is worthwhile to make. Now that that bread has risen up, we'll go ahead and pull it out, oil up the large bread loaf pan, then roll it out into a rectangular shape that's about the width of the pan and roll that up, pressing the air out of it. And sometimes you won't get the air. It causes air gaps inside your loaf. You'll see some of that in this video. We're not professionals. It's one of the attractiveness of homemade bread is it's not perfect like what you see that comes out of the factories. If you do any research on what they used to eat during difficult times, say Depression Era or even before that, flour, biscuits, and bread were main staples, buying 50-pound bags at a time. You had a meat, you had your flour, your bread, your biscuit, and a, a canned vegetable. Those are the quintessential items that kept this country alive and fueled the Industrial Re Revolution over the years. Who knows whether we end up back in those times? But develop the skills now, and when you may need them in the future, it's okay. And you benefit from having fresh bread, even when it's not a necessity. Roll that up, and then place it back into the pan, and then give it another hour and a half to rise back in that warm microwave oven until it's puffed up out and over the pan. We do give that cast iron a little bit of a warming before we put the bread in it, just so that the heat continues to spread throughout that dough. Here's something else to think about with this bread, and you'll notice it does not keep as long as the bread that you get from the store. That's because it doesn't have all the chemicals in it. If you go back and look 120, 130 years ago, where they went through the process of making shelf-stable bread. Even though they don't call what you buy in the store right now shelf-stable bread, it is bread that will last for weeks. That's in their interest, not in yours. So when you're making this bread, this is only six ingredients. There's nothing in it that's going to increase the shelf life or add in the preservatives. You do need to eat it within a day or two or the quality starts to fall off quick. That's the way bread is supposed to be. It's not supposed to last forever in your cupboard. Well, we transitioned over to the oven for 35 minutes at 375 degrees. Knowing that I've got this recipe designed specifically for the size of this Lodge cast iron pan. I'll put a link down below where you can buy this pan through Amazon. And it's, like I said, it's perfectly designed for you to take this, follow this process, throw it in this cast iron pan, all done. You don't have to worry about volumes and whether or not you're using enough or making too much. Here's another tip. When you get that out of the oven, don't leave it sitting inside the, the cast iron tray. Get it out, let it cool down, and you won't, some of the moisture will go off of the crust. You'll get a crispier crust from that. Having a good bread knife can help as well. The serrations this is a carver, works just as well, but a bread knife has these serrations on it that make slicing that bread easier. It's worth having something like this. Mm.
When you really do get into making this bread, you can get fancy with it. You can throw in, say, some jalapenos, throw in some cheese, maybe a little bit of garlic. Whatever you're going to do with this bread, you can make it yours. When you're cooking, your recipe becomes yours. Don't think you have to follow exactly what you see in all these videos. That's the beauty of cooking. There is no 100% way this is the way you have to do it. Make it yours. Come back in the future and we're experimenting for you how to make hamburger rolls. Fresh hamburger rolls with some venison burgers. That's a future video in the making and we'd love to show you how to do it. You can see we've kind of got some size issues. I've never used one of these silicone pans before, so it's a learning curve. Subscribe, come back, and you can catch that video as well. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist for cast iron you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.